Hello Internet, uh, it's Richard here. Um, it's late and I'm just going to make a quick grumpy little video. Um, I'm, this, this is the, the how-to of, of how to make this. I'm, I'm not going to edit this, I'm just far too lazy for that. Um, so this is the 08 with the lid off. Um, the lid is here. Lid, shell, top, whatever. Uh, that's over there. Um, to remove it, it's just four screws on the bottom. That's all detailed in the instructions, dead simple. Um, and what you'll what you'll get is you'll get obviously not this bit, but you'll get this little connector here, and a, a blanking plate will be plugged into it already. Um, and then you'll have this on here as well. This will be in in I don't know rough roughly that kind of orientation. Yeah, well not roughly exactly that kind of orientation. Um, so to to do what I did and to do the video that I did previously. All you have to do is you have to print 3D print, which I say all you have to do if you don't have a printer, that's going to be difficult. Um, you have to 3D print the under this white part here. I'll, I'll leave links in the video description uh, on to Thingiverse for you. So there's the there's the uh, sugar cube speaker, it's kind of the, the the bottom part of it here, which basically replaces what would be in here because even the smallest one is a little bit too big, just just a couple of millimeters too big. So that's a couple of millimetres smaller and actually have a little bit of space to spare. I could possibly make it even bigger, but it, it works. I don't want to mess with it. And then you need to 3D print. Well, here's another one down here. You 3D print one of these as well. So basically, you have to remove this piece, which is which was sitting on here. You will find, probably, that there's a wire going through that hole there, that big hole there. So you've got two screw holes. Focus. There we go. You've got two screw holes, one either side. And then you've got the big the big hole in the middle, which is where the wire goes through. So you want to on-solder that wire. It's just a wire that goes from the motor to here. You can on-solder it on, in place. Um, then you want to take the two screws out, pop that bit off, set this to one side, set the screws to one side as well. Then get this piece, put it in place, use the screws you've just taken out of here to then secure it. Uh, when you do 3D print this piece, um, make sure that those holes are clear. So try and print it in a, in a higher quality setting if you can, and maybe a lower temperature just to remove to reduce the risk of stringing. Or do it on a resin printer if you have one of those. <coughs> and then, um, yeah, just screw that in place, and then it's pretty self-explanatory basically. Then just get your your, your Zymo, Zemo, whatever it's called. Get get your DCC controller, plug it in, um, and then plug your well then wire your speaker to your your controller um, with my controller these these wires here were kind of pre-soldered in for some reason um, there were two speaker wires and weirdly one wire coming off here which I think was a, a neutral for some reason I have no idea why that was there um, so I just unfurled that and cut that off I didn't need that at all uh, and it's positive to positive negative to negative these wires are damn near the same color and I'm colorblind so that was really difficult to see that so I did I did have to unfurl everything and just check the instructions Positive to positive, negative to negative. Be brave with this. The wires that come off here are very long. The wires that come off here are very long. And I wasn't brave enough to cut them. So in my previous video, the wires were all stuffed down here. And it was really difficult to get them in. It took it took a good sort of 20 minutes of fiddling to get them in. And then to get the lid, the shell, whatever, back on. Um, so, so do cut the wires. Leave yourself plenty of slack, of course. These wires are very delicate. Be very careful. Um, I did cut them back with some scissors. I didn't use a, I didn't use a wire stripper. The wire stripper I have is just far too big, even for these on its lowest one. They just, just forget it. Um, I, I use scissors, just very gentle. Um, so I then soldered them on, and then I was putting a little bit of electrical tape. You can just make out here, and I've just then stuffed them in between the space between the end of the 3D printed part and the beginning of the speaker. Simple. And then you can just tidy up the wires. Um, this goes on upside down compared to the orientation it is normally. Focus. There we go. This is actually upside down. So this bit is the right way up. This bit is upside down. If you do what I did and you accidentally put connect this up the wrong way around, it's not a problem. The loco just won't move. It'll make noise. It just won't move. It's, it's, it won't short anything out. You haven't got any lights or anything too short out or anything like that. It just it, It'll try and send the motor voltage through the accessory ports, which you're not using anyway, so don't worry about it. But do just be aware of that. So that may have to go on upside down. Definitely test it before you put the shell on for obvious reasons uh, to save yourself some time. Um, also here, you've got this is, again, pre-soldered on mine. I'm not sure if it will be on yours. You've got then the capacity wires going all the way, just trailing off here. Um, they can just be just tucked away. I would recommend you keep those around just in case you do want to stay alive, which I do heartily recommend. So this is the capacitor that comes with, well, came with my box again. I don't know if it will on yours. 16 volts, a thousand, 
UF? Is that microfarads? I don't know. Um, yeah, th this is the level we're working with here, guys. Um, so it's it's that. Uh, the instructions say that six. Well, the instructions say that fifteen volts is fine, but I couldn't find any fifteen volts. Um, but the thousand is like the, the the storage, the capacity of it. The bigger that number, the longer the train will run without any power. But even then, it is literally just like half a second, if if that. It's probably even a quarter of a second. But with this mounted just on the back here, um, without the lid on, obviously. Um, and then wired up, just temporary, obviously, obviously cut that out now. It ran silky smooth, um, at the very low speed, it did still cut out at very low speeds, but at the speeds I'm actually gonna run the thing, no problem, it was absolutely fine, it didn't cut out at all. Uh, another way I found to, to stop it cutting out is to increase the speed by changing the CVs. Um, I ran it for half an hour without the capacitor yesterday at higher speeds, but it did still stutter. The sound stuttered and this thing stuttered, but it just about had enough momentum in the, uh, the motor to, to get past that. So the problem with this, it's just too big. There's, it needs to go in here. It's the only space for it to go. This is a no-go because it's the cab area and it's actually sealed off on the bottom here. It's actually completely sealed off. You cannot get stuff in there, which is a real shame. Um, cause if you wanted to like ditch the realism, that would be nice if you could just remove that without damaging anything, but I think you're gonna have to be cutting things. And the good thing is obviously you can undo this work without cut, yeah, there's no cutting involved. You know, you can do undo this work if you need to, if you want to sell the unit on or send it back to Hornby or whatever, you can undo it and make it factory again. So I'm currently losing my mind a little bit. I found some 400 and, 80 I think it was 400 and something of, of the UF at 16 volts um, so the 16 volts I can't go in. I don't think I can go lower than that I think if I went to 10 it would make the capacitor smaller and it might fit but I think 10 is too low so I do think I need to be at 16 or 15 according to the instructions but 16 is, is apparently what's out there um, so I think it's 400 and something which is less than half I do want to get something in there and I found some that are a really really weird sort of suitcase like shape rather than that cylindrical shape so i'm going to see if i can order those but they may be a while before they come to me and i may just get the wrong things but i've been told they work fine on this decoder it's just purely a, a space capacitor thing that capacity thing that's the issue there's just it's really tight in here so um all doable so that that was your how-to um another thing i did also is the, the pins that come off the decoder here I trimmed them down for God's sake, just wear some glasses or something because genuinely these things just ping right off. Um, I trimmed these down because there was this extra sort of like three or four mils there. It, it, these pings were way too long. Um, so I trimmed them down a little bit and they're still slightly too long, but obviously I don't want to make them too short because for obvious reasons. Um, if, if you're really handy with soldering on, you could just potentially solder these straight onto here if you wanted to. But again, you're then at the point of making it more difficult to revert later on. So this is this is quite accessible. You still need a soldering iron, you still need some tools, you still need a 3D printer or at least access to one. This isn't easy, um, but it is doable and it is reversible without without cracking out a Dremel or something like that. Um, so yeah, my next, like I said, my next step is to get a, get a capacitor here. I'm gonna make another video, but I, I figured I'll get this one out just so you guys, if whoever wants this without, without the stay alive capacitor thing, you you can go right on ahead and and do, and do that and it, it it will run if you've got damn near perfect track but it really does demand perfect track in order to work um so just bear that in mind so yeah you can have it with sound uh, it does work it's okay there's no problems there so I'll, I'll make another video um and thank you for the, the kind words on the comments that i got on the first one i'll make another video and i'll, I'll try and source a better capacitor well smaller not better capacitor to try and squeeze in there and if I get that done, I'll make one last follow-up video on, on this subject, and that will probably be it. Um, thank you for watching. Um, thank you, everyone, for your supportive words. Um, yeah, hopefully hopefully we'll have a nice little 08 with a bit of sound, and then I can go on to my next project, which is making um, a nice enclosure and touchscreen interface for the DCC controller I'm trying to build. Um, so one last thing, obviously, if you do try this, great. Have have fun. I'll, I'll be interested to know your experiences. But one thing I will say: look, if you if you break this, if you break this, if you break this, if you break anything on here, and Hornby or Zymo just tell you to get lost, that is down to you, right? You're you are doing something which is kind of outside of the warranty here. You're replacing parts with parts that Hornby don't know exist. So you're on your own. Don't don't hold me responsible for that.
please. Pretty please. I can't afford to be sued. Um, so yeah, that's that's it. That's all good. Um, yeah, it's, it's late here now, so I'm just going to upload this and upload the stuff to Thingiverse and then get on with the business of sleeping. Um, sorry for the low quality video, but I'm just I'm just far too lazy to edit things and turn into like a proper YouTuber. So this is, this is the best you're going to get out of me, I'd imagine. Okay, have a good day, everyone. Bye-bye.